Welcome to this basic lecture about matrices and matrix operations. This lecture consists of two videos. In this first video, we'll cover the basics of matrices and vectors, and how we can get the transpose of a matrix. We'll also learn some basic matrix operations. In the second video, we'll learn how to calculate the determinant and the inverse of a matrix. A matrix is defined as a rectangular array with entries, for example numbers in rows and columns. For example, the following matrix stores six numbers in two rows and three columns. Let's give this matrix a name. For example, we name it matrix A. Since matrix A has two rows and three columns, we call this a two by three matrix. Now, have a look at this matrix, matrix B. This matrix has three rows and two columns. This is therefore a three by two matrix. What you see here is a square three by three matrix that stores weight, height, and upper blood pressure of three persons. Row 1 stores data for person number 1, whereas the second row stores data for person number 2, and the last row stores data for person number 3. The first column stores the body weights of all three persons. whereas the second column stores the body heights and the third column stores the blood pressures. Let's name this matrix A. We see that matrix A is a 3 by 3 matrix since it has 3 rows and 3 columns. We will now discuss matrix elements. Matrix A has in total 9 elements. Each element in this matrix has a unique identifier or label based on its row and column. For example, the element located in the first row, third column, is equal to 120. This element can be denoted like this, where we see that the element of matrix A at the first row, third column, is equal to 120. This value represents the blood pressure of person number 1. Let's take another example. This element is located on the third row in the second column, which can be denoted like this. The second variable, the body height, of the third person is therefore equal to 179. If a matrix has only a single row or a single column, it is called a vector. What we see here is a column vector because it only consists of one column. Whereas this vector is called a row vector since it only consists of just one row. We'll now study special types of matrices. If a matrix has the same number of rows and columns, it is called a square matrix. For example, the following 3x3 three three matrix is therefore considered as a square matrix. If all the elements in a matrix are equal to zero, the matrix is called a zero matrix. All elements in this 3x3 three three matrix are equal to zero. Matrix A is therefore a square zero matrix. If the main diagonal of a square matrix is equal to only ones and zeros elsewhere, it is called an identity matrix. An identity matrix is usually denoted by capital I. Note that only the elements in its main diagonal are set to 1, whereas all other elements are equal to 0. We'll now have a look at some matrix operations. Let's first have a look at the transpose of a matrix. 
For example, the transpose of a matrix is usually denoted like this, which represents that we have flipped the rows and columns of matrix A. Note that the first column in matrix A is equal to the first row of the transpose of A, and that the second column of matrix A is equal to the second row of the transposed matrix. The transpose is commonly used in statistics when we like to perform calculations on the rows instead of the columns, or vice versa. For example, if we would transpose the following dataset with patients on the rows and their variables on the columns, we would get the following table, where the patients are now presented on the columns instead of the rows, and the variables are placed on the rows instead of the columns. For example, the column with the weight of the patients is the same as the second row in the transpose table. We'll now have a look at symmetric matrices. A symmetric matrix is a square matrix that is equal to its transpose. For example, the following matrix is a symmetric matrix because if we transpose it, the elements of the transposed matrix will be equal to the original matrix. For example, the first column of matrix A is identical to the first column of its transpose. The upper triangle in a symmetric matrix is identical to the lower triangle. We will now learn how we can add two matrices. The sum of two matrices can only be computed if the two matrices have the same dimensions, which means that they should have the same number of rows and columns. In this case, matrix A and B have the same dimensions, which means that they can be added. Adding two matrices together is easy. We just add the corresponding elements of the two matrices. In this case, we start to add these two numbers, and then these. 3 plus 2 is 5, and 4 plus 2 is 6. Subtracting two matrices follows the same principle, where we subtract the elements in the second matrix from the corresponding elements in the first matrix. This results in the following matrix. Multiplying a matrix by a number is also easy. In this case, we call the number a scalar. Therefore, multiplying a matrix by a number is called a scalar multiplication. For example, if we multiply matrix A by 3, we first multiply 3 by 1, then 3 times 2, which is 6. 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 4 is 12. However, multiplying two matrices together is a bit more complicated. Let's say that we like to multiply the row vector A by the column vector B. We put the vectors like this, and then we multiply these two elements. And then we multiply these two elements. Finally, we sum these two products. Multiplying a column vector by a row vector therefore results in just a number. When performing this calculation, we can think like we take the vector to the right hand side, flip it so that we can put it on top of the row vector. Once we have flipped the vector, we multiply these numbers together and then these two numbers. Then we sum these products. We'll now see how we can multiply a 2 by 2 matrix by a column vector. Note that in order to multiply two matrices together, the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. 
In this case, we fulfill this requirement because the first matrix has two columns and the second matrix has two rows. In order to multiply these matrices together, imagine that we flip the column vector and put it on top of matrix A. Once we have placed the vector like this, we multiply the values in the corresponding positions, where we take 1 times 3 plus 2 times 4. The sum of these products is 11. Then we move the vector one step down. Then we multiply these numbers and add to the product of these numbers. 9 times 16 is equal to 25. The resulting matrix will have the same number of rows as the first matrix and the same number of columns as the second matrix. Since the first matrix has two rows, the resulting matrix will also have two rows. And since the second matrix has one column, the resulting matrix will also have one column. Remember that in order to multiply two matrices, the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. Since the number of columns in the first matrix in this example is equal to 1, and the number of rows of the second matrix is equal to 2, we cannot do this calculation. However, if matrix V is a row vector instead of a column vector, we can perform this calculation since the number of columns of the first matrix is now equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. We see that the resulting matrix has the same number of rows as the first matrix and the same number of columns as the second matrix. Note, we will usually get a different result if we swap the order of the two matrices we multiply. For example, let's multiply matrix A and B. As you see, multiplying matrix A by matrix B results in a different matrix compared to if we multiply matrix B by matrix A. We now have a look at what happens if we multiply the following identity matrix by this column vector. We will therefore compute the identity matrix times the vector. 1 times 3 is 3 and 0 times 4 is 0. 3 plus 0 is 3. 0 times 3 is 0, and 1 times 4 is 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. As you see, the vector did not change at all. Multiplying a matrix by an identity matrix results in the same matrix. Multiplying by an identity matrix is like multiplying a number by 1. For example, 5 times 1 is still 5. This was the end of this video about the basics of matrices and vectors. In the second video, we'll learn how to calculate the determinant and the inverse of a matrix.